just and flourish like a palm tree, and grow like a Lebanon seed, planted in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. Have mercy on us, O Lord. For we have sent you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who brought the abbot St. Anthony to serve you by a wondrous way of life in the desert, grant through his intercession that, denying ourselves, we may always love you above all things. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. reading from the first book of Samuel. David spoke to Saul, Let your majesty not lose courage. I am at your service to go and fight this Philistine. But Saul answered David, You cannot go up against this Philistine and fight with him, for you are only a youth, while he has been a warrior from his youth. David continued, The Lord who delivered me from the claws of the lion and the bear will also keep me safe from the clutches of this Philistine. Saul answered David, Go, the Lord be with you. Then, staff in hand, David selected five smooth stones from the wadi and put them in the pocket of his shepherd's bag. With his sling also ready to hand, he approached the Philistine. With his shield bearer moving, marching before him, the Philistine also advanced closer and closer to David. When he had sized David up, and seeing that he was youthful and ruddy and handsome in appearance, the Philistine held David in contempt. The Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come out against me with a staff? Then the Philistine cursed David by his gods and said to him, Come here to me, and I will leave your flesh for the birds of the air and the beasts of the wild. David answered him, you come against me with sword and spear and scimitar, but I come against you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, that you have insulted. Today the Lord shall deliver you into my hand. I will strike you down and cut off your head. This very day I will leave your corpse and the corpses of the Philistine army for the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. Thus the whole land shall learn that Israel as a God. All this multitude, too, shall learn that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's, and he shall deliver you into our hand. The Philistine then moved to meet David at close quarters, while David ran quickly toward the battle line in the direction of the Philistine. David put his hand into the bag and took out a stone hurled it with its sling, and struck the Philistine in the forehead. The stone embedded itself in his brow, and he fell prostrate on the ground. Thus David overcame the Philistine with sling and stone. He struck the Philistine mortally, and did it without a sword. Then David ran and stood over him. With the Philistine's own sword, which he drew from his sheath, he dispatched him and cut off his head. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial song. Blessed be the Lord, my rock. Blessed be the Lord, my rock. Blessed be the Lord, my rock, who trains my hands for battle, my fingers for war. Blessed be the Lord, my rock. My refuge and my fortress, my stronghold, my deliverer, my shield in whom I trust, who subdues my people under me. Blessed, Blessed be the Lord, my rock. O God, I will sing a new song to you. With a ten-stringed lyre, I will chant your praise. 
Blessed you who give victory to kings and deliver David, your servant, from the evil sword. Blessed, Blessed be the Lord, my rock. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus preached the gospel of the kingdom and cured every disease among the people. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, you Lord. Jesus entered the synagogue where there was a man there who had a withered hand. They watched Jesus closely to see if he would cure him on the Sabbath so that they might accuse him. He said to the man with the withered hand, come up here before us. Then he said to the Pharisees, Is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath rather than to do evil, to save life rather than to destroy it? But they remained silent, looking around at them with anger and grieved at their hardness of heart. Jesus said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately took counsel with the Herodians against him, to put him to death. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. Good morning, God. I have this sudden desire to want to recount the Shakespearean uh, verse of St. Crispin's Day speech. We few, we faithful few. You can't see it on the video, but if we showed it from the far camera, you would see George, our elector, James, our server, and our two eight maintenance guys, Bob and Frank, or in honor of Mary Shelley, we call them Frank and Bob. That's it, and me. Everybody else is iced in. We had, what, a millimeter of ice on the road? Yeah. It's snow day in South Alabama. No one knows how to drive. I'll be brief because mainly I'm speaking to the people on the on the computer because they'll they'll uh, have more an opportunity to watch it than uh, you know we all root for the underdog I think uh, I know many people that are always pulling for an underdog and we we hold them up with their great victories. All of us here, since we're all over the age of 40, we remember the 1980 Lake Placid Olympics. The U.S. hockey team made up of predominantly college age kids beat, miraculously beat, the greatest hockey team ever in the Soviet team with uh, probably the greatest goalie ever in goal. And I remember the whole country celebrated it. It's a great underdog story. It's considered one of the greatest victories or celebrations in America was this miraculous game. So we pull for the underdogs in every country. I'm sure, because we have multi-countries that watch this video, they can all look to great moments where an underdog rises up and achieves something. The David story, the underdog who rises up to defeat the great enemy, Goliath, and in doing so, solidifies his place in history as a great warrior and later a great king, despite his faults. And it occurred to me in my reflection as I was praying, I, you know, we pull for the underdog in sports or in battles, or we look for those things, but who is the greatest underdogs? And I'm not talking about the cartoon. Yeah, y'all remember that one? Underdog cartoon, here he comes to save the day. Oh gosh. 
I'm showing my age. Now, the greatest underdog literally is you and I, if you think about it. Because look at the battles that we must face daily. The battle against our flesh. You know, we have a tendency to want to put ourselves down. We're not good enough. We're not smart enough, strong enough. We don't accept ourselves for who we are. We're, we're okay the way we are, okay? If God wanted us all to be as tall as uh, an NBA basketball player, we'd all be as tall as an NBA basketball player, but he made us all with various heights, from various races, with various genders, various experiences that all provide us an opportunity to spread the hand of God and his message in the way that only we can do. But we put ourselves down. We struggle against the flesh in other ways. My gosh, uh, we're all men here. It doesn't matter who watches this as far as their gender, but everybody struggles with sins of the flesh. Those random thoughts that pass through our minds. We struggle with addictions and addictive behaviors. We're an underdog in that sense against our own self. We're also an underdog against the spirit of evil and Satan. As are we know from our faith that the enemy of humanity, the evil spirit, Satan, the devil, Beelzebub, they are intellectually far superior than we will ever be. I often said the dumbest devil is smarter by far than the, the most intelligent human ever made. So they know exactly what buttons to push to tempt us. In fact, some of the temptations that we experience are temptations that are being, uh, we're, we're being tempted to something that's good, but to misuse the good in, a, in an odd, negative, or unbecoming way. There's always a level of beauty in temptation or a level of goodness because the devil's never going to tempt us to something we don't want. Look, I'll give you an example. If you do not like to eat Brussels sprouts, is the devil going to tempt you to eat, gorge yourself with Brussels sprouts? No. If you like ice cream, is he going to tempt you to eat ice cream? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Pie. You eat dessert if you like it. That's where you're tempted to gorge on. So he knows what buttons to push. And he always has a tendency to take something that we would consider beautiful and just to twist it to where it would be for nefarious means or goals. We vastly are the underdogs in life. Yes, I know people say we are redeemed by Christ. Our church says that. We are saved. Yes, our church says that. But during this earthly life, that goal, that redemption can be lost because the underdog can lose the battle. We have that potential to lose the battle. So instead, and this is where I'm inevitably leading up to, so instead of being critical toward each other, putting down each other, criticizing, condemning, treating each other in the most unchristian-like ways, shouldn't we be more supportive of each other? If we root for the underdog, shouldn't we be rooting for each other? Shouldn't we root for ourselves? If we celebrate the underdog winning a, a great victory, shouldn't we celebrate us? as underdogs, whenever we move away from sin, give up an addictive behavior, make a good decision, do a good deed for someone, shouldn't those be celebrated with equal uh, excitement and joy? 
And that's the lesson I think we can take out of this for myself, for you four gentlemen here, and hopefully for all those who watch this video. We support an underdog as David was an underdog. Let us support each other. Let us support ourselves. Let us celebrate the good victories won every day through small acts of kindness. Let us celebrate men and women who move away from addiction and bad behaviors. Let us support them and encourage them. We are the underdog. May Almighty God be with you. May he bless you. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Coming together as one family in faith, let us offer to God our prayers and our needs. We pray for our Holy Father, for our Archbishop, for all priests, religious brothers, sisters, permanent deacons, and seminarians. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick or suffering in any way this day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we hear our prayer. We pray for those who will struggle with this weather throughout the world, who struggle with the excessive heat in the summer, and cold in the winter. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for your needs, you gentlemen here, and for the needs of those, our family who watch this Mass on video, for their needs. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us pray this Mass for Joanne Bachman, for whom it is offered. For her and for her family, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Offering all our prayers to the Father, let us conclude with prayer in honor of the Blessed Trinity. Glory, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, but through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God for us. Pray, brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. For the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his own church. May these offerings of our service placed on your altar in commemoration of St. Anthony be acceptable to you, O Lord, we pray, and grant that released from earthly attachments, we may have our riches in you alone, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence, by which you call human nature back to its original holiness, and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, 
which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, so and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. To await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be Lamb of God, you can take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Perfect. Go, sell what you have, give to the poor, and follow me, says the Lord.
Let us pray. Nourished for our healing by your sacraments, O Lord, may we escape every snare of the enemy unharmed, just as by your grace St. Anthony won glorious victories over the powers of darkness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Prayer to St. Michael. Holy, Holy Michael, Michael the Archangel, defend, defend us in battle. Be, be our protection, protection against, against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God, God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power, thrust into hell, Satan and all the other evil spirits who wander through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Divine praises. Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Consoler. Blessed be the Great Mother of God, Mary Most Holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God and his angels and his saints.